Hey, how's it going everyone? In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can run JavaScript in Visual Studio Code. So not in the browser, but in Visual Studio Code. So in case you are just starting to learn JavaScript or just want to know how to run JavaScript in Visual Studio Code, aka VS Code, and it doesn't matter if, it, if you are on Windows or on Mac, you most certainly come to the right place. Because in this video, I'm going to teach you how to run JavaScript in Visual Studio Code. And not only that, I'm going to show you how to the beginning and also install and run NPM and Node.js. You're going to create your very first JavaScript program and also run it in VS Code. So if you're excited, then please give this video a thumbs up. And with this being said, I'm going to remove my face and let's get started by installing Visual Studio Code on your machine. Now, if you already have Visual Studio Code installed, then you can skip this part because I do have timestamps in the video description below and jump to the next part where I show you how to install Node.js uh, Node and NPM. So let's get started with installing Visual Studio Code. So first let's install Visual Studio Code. For this, you need to go to Google, search for Visual Studio Code or just go to code.visualstudio.com. And from here you can, depending on your operating system, download Visual Studio Code. Now, if you're on a Mac, it will automatically appear for a Mac. If you're on Windows, it will automatically appear for a Windows. Also, you could install the Insider Edition. I wouldn't recommend that. Just stick with the regular Visual Studio Code. Now, let's click on Download. This should download Visual Studio Code. After it's done, just install it. And the, the download zip file is completed. Just click on it, install it, and this will install Visual Studio Code for you. So you can click on it. It will start the extraction package, so far and so on. I already have it installed, so I don't need to do this. Now, after we're done installing it, let's also run it. So I'm also going to close up this tab and either search for it using Spotlight if you're on a Mac. So Visual Studio Code started from here, or you could click on the icon or you could run it from the console. Okay, so you should see this when you are just getting started with Visual Studio Code. Now, later on, we're also going to install a couple of extensions, but first, let's install Node.js. Now, for this, we need to go back to our browser and you can either search in Google for Node.js or you could just type in nodejs.org. Again, this is node, N-O-D-E, J-S dot org. And you should land on this page. There are, again, two versions. There's a 16.15 and the current one, but do not use this one because this is the, well, let's just say unstable edition and the LTS, this is the standard, the light edition. Everybody uses this. You shouldn't have problems with this. Now, again, the versions, the versions could vary. Now, let's click on it. This, again, will start a, a download package manager depending on what operating system you are. Let's click on it. This is start the installer. Let's continue installing it. Just click next, agree. The installation process is pretty much forward. I just need to use my password here. And after the installation is done, you can close it up. But first, if you're probably wondering where we can, from where we can install NPM, well, you will see that the Node package manager already comes with NPM. This means you have the most current version of NPM already installed when you're installing Node.js. So let's close this up. Now we should check if we actually, I could close up my browser. We should check if we actually installed Node.js or NPM or if we have the latest version. Now, when you are in Visual Studio Code, and I'm doing this because some of you are on the Mac and some of you are on a Windows machine. Now, Visual Studio Code has an integrated terminal. So if you go up to the start bar and click on terminal, new terminal, they should open up the terminal. Also, if you hold down control and tilde, they should open up the terminal. I have multiple terminals here, so I'm going to delete both of them and open up a brand new terminal. Now, this terminal depends on, it's going to run the terminal that is on your machine. If you are on a Mac, then you will have the Z HS terminal. If you are on a Windows, then you should see CMD terminal here or PowerShell if you have PowerShell installed. But this is for now irrelevant. What we need to do now is check if we have the latest versions of NPM and Node.js. In order to check for the version of Node.js, you just need to type in node dash dash version. Hit enter and this will check for the latest version of your Node.js. And if the version appears, then this means two things. First of all, you have Node.js installed. And second of all, you have the latest version if this version is the same one with which you installed it. Now there's also a shortcut on checking this. You just type in node 
dash. So only one dash MV. This will give you the same result. And also for in order to check for npm dash dash version version, it should give you the latest version of npm or the version that you have installed. And also npm and only one dash and v will give you the same thing. Okay, so we have Node.js and we have npm installed and this means we can move on and we can now install a couple of extensions for Visual Studio Code. Now the left part right here, the explorer part, or actually the, the, the active bar, we can open up and close up multiple things from here. This is where we can find extensions. So this right here, if you don't see extensions, then you need to activate them. You see here, click on extensions. Now in our extensions, we want to install two extensions. First one will be ES6. As you can see, I already have this installed. Now this extension contains code snippets for JavaScript in ES6 syntax for Visual Studio Code Editor. This supports both JavaScript snippets and also TypeScript snippets. Now TypeScript is just a superset of JavaScript, which just means JavaScript a bit of superpowers. It can do everything that JavaScript does and also a bit more. Now, in other words, these extensions will make your life much, much easier when you're typing JavaScript code. Now, the next extension that we need in order to run JavaScript within Visual Studio Code is Code Runner, okay? This is also one that I have installed you can basically click on install. Also install should appear here. Now the code run extension will run code snippets for code files for actually multiple uh, types of files, not only JavaScript, but this is specifically for JavaScript that we will use it now. You can see it runs for C, C++, Java, J JavaScript, PHP, Python, so far, so on, Ruby, everything else. Now also including JavaScript, so we don't need the V8 engine from our Chrome browsers or from any browser, a matter of fact, in order to run JavaScript. Now, after we have both of these extensions installed, you can also close this up and also go back to our Explorer. And as you can see here, we can open up a new folder or clone a repository. This can be a Git repository, a GitHub, or a Git lab or Git bucket, whatever. But we, what we want to do now is create a new file. Now, if you hover over the Explorer tab right here, you can see new file. Now this file, we do not need to save it. We can save it later on, but what we don't want to do here is just type in a console, console, a console dot log and open and close curly brackets. And now within a string, we would type in subscribe to my channel. Now, after you type this in down here in the code is where in the console is where the code is going to run. Now, in order for this code to run, you need to press this play button in the upper right corner. You can see it, run code. Now press this button, and now you will see that the console just printed out what you typed in between these two quotation marks. Now this is basically a string for those of you who don't know this. Now it also tells us in the console that running node forward slash var folders, blah, 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 this just means that we didn't save this file and this is running in a template. It also tells us that the code ran. So after the code ran, it says done, existed, exited, and it's also exiting the code with code zero in blah, blah, blah seconds. Okay, so let's run a bit more code. Let's, for example, create a variable using the let keyword. You know, there's var, let, and const, and it's ES6. We prefer to use let and const instead of var. Now let's call this variable subscribe. And let's assign it to this string right here. So I'm just going to take this string, copy it in, and now I will create another console log. I will so comment this one out. Now, in order to comment something out, you need to type in two forward slashes. So go to the start of the code, type in forward slash, forward slash, and this should comment it out. Now there's also a shortcut key. You can hold down command and forward slash, and this will toggle on and off the comment out. So this means commenting out, this means commenting back in. Okay, I will comment this out and let's type in underneath our let another console log. So console, and if you just type in CLG, then the code snippets will show you console log. Now let's hit enter. And within here, we're going to use the variable of subscribe that we just created up there. And now let's click on the play button again. And you will see, we just have exactly the same thing. Now let me type in here a two. Let's run the code again. You can see we have now this this code updated. I could also update this uh, this variable because it is defined with let. Let me delete this two 
from here, let's type in subscribe. I'm going to use this exact thing, but I'm going to type in here too. And now if I run the code again, you're going to see it. So it's updated. Now I can update variables with the let keyword, but I cannot update const with the let keyword. So let's create now a const. Let's give this variable the name of channel name. I'm going to assign this to another string, Norbert BM. Now I could run this variable by just typing in here a plus sign and channel name. If you now click on play, this will give me subscribe to my channel and we don't need this two in here and Norbert BM. If I wish to have a space within channel and Norbert, I could type in here another string using plus again. And between these two pluses, use a string and a space between them. And now click the play button and this should have now a space within them. We can also use a function. Let's create a function with the function keyword. Let's call it subscribe to function will return our variable of subscribe and the channel name. But this time we're not going to use this plus sign or regular strings, we're going to use backticks, which are template literals. And within template literals, we can use variables. So I'm going to create a dollar sign, then two curly brackets, copy the subscribe variable within here, and then the const with channel name, copy it in here. And instead of this console log, I'm going to comment this one out and create another console log dot log. And I'm going to run this function within the console log. So this right here, click on play. This should give me exactly the same thing. Subscribe to my channel, Norbert BM. And let's, you know what, add here another string of web development. Click on the play button again. And we should see now, subscribe to my channel, Norbert BM web development, because we can use strings within template literals. All right, so hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you have any kind of questions or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and click that notification bell in order to get notified whenever I post new videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Norbert and catch you on the flip side. Bye-bye.